Hello. Hello, everyone. This is the uh, lecture produced, prepared for you by Dorota Gupatite. And uh, my name is Katarzyna Podpora. I'm her personal translator and interpreter, and I will read my translation of this text that she prepared, and we will try to deliver a beautiful lecture for you with also with this presentation based on the text. Okay, so I shall begin. The lecture introduces the figure of Wanda Czałkowska, an outstanding artist who made her debut in Krakow while still studying at the Academy of Fine Arts. Where she was, uh, when she was in high school, she wanted to study mathematics, but then she met Saverinkowski in Olsztyn. Uh, he was working there on a monument. They talk extensively. And as she later recalled, sculptural issues kicked her so hard that they got inside of her. In response to Picasso's famous quote, she said, one does not find anything in art, one is in art. So she began her studies at the studio of Jerzy Bandura, a young but very expressive artist, the author of the award-winning sculpture Crow, in 1946. She was one of the most remarkable figures of contemporary sculpture at the Academy in Krakow. She studied with, among others, Tadeusz Siekwicki, the author of the outstanding Neo Sculptures, created in parallel with those of Gunther Wecker, and poetry. She also met there Maria Pinska Beres, a proto feminist artist, and her husband Jerzy Beres, a progressive creator, the author of the famed actions and manifestations. She made friends with other personalities in the world of sculptures, such as Marian Barenha, who was important because his art merged with mathematics, like later Wanda's did. They both joined the Krakow group, thanks to the invitation of the great Tadeusz Kantor. During her studies, Wanda developed a friendship with a progressive graphic designer, Roman Cieślewicz, and thanks to him, she became close to Alina Shapochnikov, whom she visited in Paris in 1963. Uh, we can say also that Alina Shapochnikov wanted, uh, was uh, charmed by Wanda and wanted her to stay in Par Paris, but she uh, came back to Krakow. She used to say that she can only think at home. Uh, in years 1959 and 1960, Wanda Czokowska experimented with the category of space, architectural dimensions, gravity, and anti-gravity. She then developed conceptual sketches and worked on the design of a large-scale geometric interiors composed of a sphere and a cube to achieve the experience of independence from gravity. The dimensions of the interior would enable a person, a participant, to move freely over certain distances. In 1960, Wanda Czukowska considered the project realization and consulted it with physicists working in academic institutions in Krakow. From today's point of view, the analytical and scientific nature of this project seems to have a political context to some extent revealing also Oscar Hansen's aspiring concept of open form, postulating transgeographic fluidity of space, especially interpersonal space, based on the ideas of open society. Wanda Czokowska's interest in conquering gravity resonates with the dreams of, of American scientists and politicians who set out to conquer the moon and space. In the years 1969 and 1972, so a decade after Jakowska's work on anti-gravitational space, uh, which she realized in the country, as Piotr, uh, as Piotr Piotrowski put it, which was in the shadow of Yalta at the time and since 
1961 in the shadow of the Berlin Wall. There is a delicate natural reference, a closeness to von Dachukowska's searchings in the work of Marek Tarkovsky, who debuted in the early 1990s. Uh, as he stated that, the most interesting sculptures are created by or at NASA. Marek Targowski is a, a recognized intermediate and transhumanist artist who studied under Franciszek Duszenko, as well as Vitas Borczyna Czerwonek. Uh, coming back to the artist's uh, interest in distancing herself from the physical phenomenon of gravity. It also has its psychological dimension. The artist mentioned that the emotionally and politically grim 1940s and 1950s, she learned to distance herself from the world, go inside and surround herself with intellectually challenging tasks. A mantra of intellectual meals, so-called meals provided to her by Krakow libraries. For breakfast, I went to this library. For dinner, I went to the other library. Um, there was also the radio that was bringing the world from afar co closer. She remembered from her student days, joint meetings with Tadeusz Sikulski, a sculptor and poet, Roman Cieślewicz and Ryszard Brzeski, very, a very talented young artist who experimented beyond the framework of painting. Uh, and there is a quotation. Rysiek Brzeski was the only one who had a small radio. We listened to the BBC together. It was brilliant. Such a characteristic jingle. We listened to it seriously, but we were also quite amused by the experience because it made us feel as if we were on an island. There is a solid theoretical context for Wanda Czolkowska's anti-gravitational space, as well as for her other structures extending discreetly in space, such as the early piece head. For, or the one realized for Richard de Marco in Edinburgh as part of Atelier 72 in 1972. This piece was called Conceptual Information Concerning a Table or Conceptual Information on a Table, I would say. And finally, the absolute elimination of sculpture as a notion of shape from 1972 and other projects. This context is built by, for example, Rosalind Krauss's research, research described in her text, Sculpture in the Expanded Field from 1979. Enriched uh, by some new perspectives later in the collective volume, Retracing the Expanded Field in 2014, or Edward T. Hall's The Hidden Dimension from 1966. In Wanda Czarkowska's case, due to the severity of her extensive para-architectural works and the special role of both carefully selected materials, unprimed, such as unprimed canvas, black and white concrete, wooden beams, screws, tension, light poles and embedded in electrical installations, etc. And free empty space where empty uh, means more unmarked, undetermined. And from 1959, also anti-gravitational. Here analogies can be drawn to artists from the circle of action architecture. They looked, they also looked for inspiration in unprocessed raw materials and the specificity of their surroundings, preferring to use sketches rather than designs and value their unique construction supervision. The forms of a sphere and a cube intentionally combined by the the artists in anti-gravitational space refer to cultures 
based on mathematical thought, as well as remind us of the pioneering activities and theories of Richard Bookminster Fuller, who, like Ramda Tchaikovska, anticipated many trends, including architecture odd, architecture mobile, anti-illusion, structuralism, conceptualism, post-minimalism, neoconstructivism, and brutalism. Their work heralds contemporary strategies of, and there is a quotation, art playing with architecture. Among young generation of artists, about which Gabriela Schwitek wrote in a broader context in 2013. Pante Tchaikovska herself emphasizes, sculpture is the structure of space, mathematics. Mathematics is a way to define feeling. Richard DeMarco draws attention to mathematical and energetic nature of space in his watercolor interpretations of Edinburgh landscapes, creating a unique record of light transforming the city at night. And he started in 1963. And uh, Richard DeMarco is still continuing this, right? Psycho of watercolor interpretations of landscapes. Panta Tchaikovska is the author of a number of other discrete works touching interiors with sequences of lines made of special thick wooden beams, developing the idea of the infinite line, which is very which was very close to her. Her work anticipated achievements and artistic publications of many well-known artists such as Donald Judd, Richard Serra, and Edward Shivida, as well as artists of the younger generation. Comparably, the anti-gravitational and energetically beneficial installations have been realized also by such artists as Olafur Eliasson, the author of the Sun and the Tate Modern in London from 2003, or Jacek Dominicak and Moon Kazabatska, who in 2004, in collaboration with Dominique Lehmann, created an architectural sculpture at the Venice Architectural Bienno. This was a seemingly empty but, uh, interior, but a feeling one. And now the table. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it is worth returning to the concept of table on which the artist had been working since 1968. At the beginning of 1971, she published the idea in a small individual catalog uh, uh, released by the Krzysztofore Gallery. She recalled that in January 1971 at Krzysztofore, she publicly discussed the concept of table. And among the listeners, there was Tadeusz Kantor. Uh, and there was a great agitation of the artistic community around this large scale very brave design. And this gradually opened up possibilities for the sculptor to realize it. And thus she showed it on December 18, 1971 at the Palace of Art in Krakow. The design of the published catalog at this occasion was also very interesting as on its first page in a small square, there is a photo, a frame of the artist's forehead with her hair combed back discreetly, showing a fragment of her eyebrows and eyes. The other side is a blank piece of paper with a small inscription at the bottom, Panda Tchaikovska. The sculptor considered the portrait of her forehead to be the whole self-portrait 
And thus, she broke the stereotype of a catalog presenting the art, artist's whole face as, as their image. She emphasized the role of thought in her art, in the concept of table, she considered different variants of the head that was supposed to be placed on the table. It could be a portrait of a random contemporary person, a head carved using tools that faithfully transfer all the existing points on the model, or it may be as it may be a sculpture made by me, entitled Head. What is really important is the table on which a multiplied head stands and the action of divisions takes place. Multiplied only 18 times, set randomly but irreversibly, frontally facing each other. Table could be realized in any location. And now we move to the concept of the great uh, work entitled Absolute Elimination of Sculpture as a Notion of Shape from 1972, which was developed by Tchaikovsky just after her return from Edinburgh. A photograph of a spatial model of this piece from 1972 was shown in 1973 at the Prismat Gallery in Krakow. And at the BWA in Sabah, also this now a state gallery of art. And there is a quotation about the work on this great piece. The fall of 1972 Marked, uh, was marked by the beginning of work on a detailed project presenting a collection of purely artistic elements. 66 concrete slabs, 66 electric lighting points, uncovered light bulbs, bulbs placed in square models made of white cloth. The blooming of those ideas and their realization happened very quick, quickly, but for this, I had to leave Edinburgh and come to Krakow. I had to come home where I was able to think. And then somehow everything crystallized for me. Uh, the absolute or the absoluteness suggested in the title of the purest work uh, through its sublimation brought the work closer to concrete art as well as to the category of mimicry. This piece uh, was completed in one-to-one -one scale at the center of Polish sculpture in Orolsko in 1995. And then the viewers could experience the subtle significance of the separated space and also its unconscious perception, which was very special. I actually experienced this work and we saw it at the artist's studio also in pieces, a very moving piece. Robert Morris interpreted free space as emptiness. He wrote, it surrounded me with whiteness, silence, cold, and allowed me to experience a tangible and intense moment of emptiness. Perhaps I was relieving these moments in the empty gray surfaces of my minimalist works. Okay, to finish off the last quotation from Wanda Czokowska, in which she summarizes her philosophy, her artistic attitude, is the following. I can do only half an hour of creative work, 
but I must always be aware that I have eternity ahead of me. This is a different sphere. After all, it is a very sublime sphere, an exclusive sphere of life, intellectual life, emotional life, everything together, intuitive, instinctive, and mathematics must create all this. All this must be transmitted by it. Thank you.